Today on The Chat, we talk all things Buffy Reboot. Is the world ready for a new Slayer? That's coming up right now. Don't go anywhere. Welcome to The Chat with J and K. I'm Jay O'Reilly, and as always, my gorgeous co-host is the wonderful Miss K. Welcome back, Miss K. Thank you. So let's get right into it. Buffy the Vampire Slayer is being rebooted by Fox with Joss Whedon as executive producer and as well as Monica Owuzu breen as our director. And um, a little side note, she also uh, was involved with Alias and unfortunately lost. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing for us, Kay, because um, we have issues with lost and i googled i did a quick google of monica before the show and um she only joined lost after after season three which i thought was a bit That's boring really going downhill yeah yeah so um i'm not gonna hold that against her at this stage but um that was just a little interesting side bit of information i thought was interesting um we don't make mistakes Yes. Some bigger than others. <laughs> yeah. So Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the original series, ran from 1997 to 2003 with, with Joss Whedon as the executive producer and the director the entire time, which is something that's going to be a little bit different this time. I've just found out, Kay, where Joss is going to be the executive producer of the Buffy reboot, but he's not necessarily going to be the director because Joss had you know really big control over the original series. God, yeah. As far as the, the you know being the director and the executive producer, the, the rumors and the plans that we're hearing at the moment um, are that there is going to be a new Slayer, that it's not going to be a, a a reboot from the start. It's going to be a sequel to the original series, which is exciting to hear. And it's been a very long time, like you know, it's been a very big break between the ending and the reboot. Yeah. So it is good to just start fresh and get some new stuff going. Really do think so. Yeah, I agree. I just don't think that um, vampires were not a big thing back then. Like, it just, it wasn't the popular kind of thing. And you look at shows like Twilight and it was like the biggest fucking boom that ever yeah. happened. It was amazing to just see the fan reaction. And um, no offence to Twilight or anything, um, I watched Twilight. I read all the books. I love it. But um. That was it. Was very fangirl kind of yeah. thing to get into. It was all about relationships. It didn't the storyline really? It wasn't the best. I, I and again, I loved it. Really, really <laughs> loved it. But um, no, it was in no compare. You know, the storyline compared to what Buffy brought to the table, it was it was child's play in comparison. And that's yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think I think a lot of people did make that mistake with the original series. They thought it was very teen. You know orientated and with silly little storylines but it was anything but that i guess you could say the first season was the exception where it was it was sort of you know a bit you know of that genre very teenage orientated um but joss very quickly turned the tables because by season two it was very dark and very heavy with the with what was going on you know especially especially when angel went bad for the first time in season two that was yeah. That was brutal. It was yes. brutal. Yeah. And um, I think it was, I can't remember the exact season, but um, when she actually killed Angel. That was, yeah, that was the end of season two. That was the end of season two. That was that was Heavy. very, very confronting. Her, like her having to deal with what she'd done and everything like that. When she ran away and became Anne, it was all yeah. very, it was, it was not... It wasn't really the show that I'd gotten myself into, and I do think people like really missed out by just judging what the show was going to be yeah. by its first season because pretty much from season two onwards, it got very, very – it was a lot to take in. It, it was, was almost like putting a puzzle together, watching it and trying to figure out the little clues that he put in oh, yeah. to show us what was going to happen later on, and you didn't know that you were even receiving clues, and that no. was – and it's so awesome is you go forward and you were watching, say, season four or five and you'd be like, oh, my God, that was season two that was brought up, but we yeah. didn't know 
but we were giving these clues. So it was that was amazing. Yeah, he was very clever like that. I, I know yeah. the two of us have rewatched the entire series again, looking for clues that he put in. You find so many of them yeah. hidden throughout the the series, but it was yeah. it was very clever. Um, and, and it's it rare you do see a show that you want to rewatch just so you can yeah. understand what's happening now more. Like that makes it amazing. It does, and yeah, and that's and that's what makes the episode still exciting to watch to this day. Um, but yeah, I mean, we we are you know probably the biggest Buffy fans on the planet. Well, it took over our own personal universe, yeah. so it was easy to kind of get trapped in. Like you, you, it was hard to differentiate between that and us because. Even when the show wasn't on, it was all we'd talk about at school. Like everywhere that we were, it was the only conversation that we wanted to have was Buffy. Yeah, and it was heartbreaking at times. Like that's like I said, from season two onwards, when when cast members were killed off, like when when Jenny was killed, that was yeah. just it was heart wrenching, and it was. and it was a mix of emotions because it was Angel that had done it. So it, it Joss was just playing absolute mind games with you. From that point, it really point. was, and it was really showing that people are not like evil is. It's not a hundred percent. Nobody is a hundred percent evil. Yeah. There's two sides to everything, and he really showed that, especially with Spike, in the yes. latest seasons when he basically attempted to rape Buffy, and it yes. was then again brought him back with his soul, and it was like he'd done all these horrible things, and but still he was so like he had so much remorse. And she had she in the end forgave him, and we had to decide then if we were going to follow her lead and yeah. forgive him for these horrible things that he'd done. It was there is so many confronting issues like that, but um, but Spike I think for me was one of the most interesting characters yeah. because Angel had his soul, you know, cursed upon him, where Spike was evil and sought out his soul. It was almost like he couldn't believe some of the things that he'd done, and like that the look on his face after she pushes him off her yeah. and says, ask me again why I can't trust you, it was like he realised then there was always going to be this part of him that she couldn't trust. And I yeah. don't think he wanted to be that person. He wanted to be better, not just for her but for himself. Like, you go to his backstory before he ever turned into a vampire and he was a very sweet, he very, was. very sweet and soft man. And I think there were still shards of him in there. I think he saw that person as weak. Yeah. But as he grew, he started to see that that was that was his true person. There was still had to be some kind of human humanity inside of him. Yeah, definitely, because yeah. he was. Yes, when we got flashbacks of, of Spike before he became a vampire, he was a very sweet mama's boy. Um, yeah, and that was another aspect of the show when they when they did their flashbacks to their vampire years. Uh, it was always very dark and always very confronting especially Angel and Dala when they had flashbacks and they were ravaging through, you know, people yeah, and, amok. and babies, mind you. And I do hope that even though he's not going to be Joss Whedon and isn't going to be as involved as he was, I do hope he has a storyline for them to follow so that we do kind of get to see this thing evolve and, like, yeah. becomes, you know, and we can go back and do what we do when we're younger and try and figure out the puzzle pieces and put it together because it really made the show, like, really worth watching. It definitely did. Yeah. And I, I think I think Joss would. You know, he still sit, talks about the show as, as one of his greatest works of, of all time. So yeah. I don't think he's about to let anything, you know, disastrous happened to the Buffy legacy um, cool. but it is it's very exciting to have a, a new chapter in the Buffy universe um, it's been a very long time and, and one that I didn't think would ever happen you know we obviously grew up in an era where reboots just weren't a thing a show finished and that was it you yeah. you know and and again like we said we, we mourned for this show um, not just not just you, but you know the the former walls that used to surround you to mourn yeah. mourn for the loss of Buffy. <laughs> yeah, so um, <laughs> let's get into that a little bit. I would like to go back to the morning, um, just to really get into how weird it was. Um, my mother was driving. My mother, who is a very big Buffy fan, we used to have to get the episodes if we were watching them. We would re record them on the VCR for her to watch the next day. She worked night shift at the time, so. That was a bit, um, I had to have it ready for her. But um, the morning of the series finale, we were driving to school and Jacob and my mother were both talking about 
how tonight was going to be the last episode, how they physically felt sick at the thought of it. And they actually said it feels like not just that, but something bad is going to happen. And I honestly remember sitting there saying, you two are ridiculous. (laughs) You need to chill. And um, so that night we had a ritual. We'd watch the episode and we would always get on the phone to each other, no matter how late it aired. Yeah, the the second the credits rolled, we'd be on the phone. (laughs) Straight away. (laughs) And that particular, because it was over, I remember that we rang each other and the first, I think, say, 10 minutes of the conversation was just dead silence because we had no words. We didn't know what. We couldn't cope. We were in, like, so much shock over what had happened. And, um, yeah, that night I went to sleep and um, was awoken to banging at my window and... um, I immediately ran into the hallway to call for my father because I thought that a lunatic was at my window. But when I opened the door to my bedroom, I um, realised that our house was actually on fire and burning to the ground. (laughs) Within Probably within, I'd say, about four or five hours of the show ending, the house burnt down, yeah. Yeah, completely to the the ground. I I, I used to live just a couple of streets away and I remember going to sleep and hearing a couple of loud bangs, which we later found out were your gas bottles igniting. Um, yeah. So it was it was an absolutely disastrous night for yeah on on every single level. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, like that's it. That that's you know to put it into perspective, you know the the Buffy finale was a huge ordeal for us as it was, and then for that to happen to Keisha, it was like this you know double blow, you know yeah. trip quadruple blow it was just yeah it made it so much more emotional it was like the whole world literally fell apart that night it was yeah boom (laughs) yeah your your house fell into the hell mouth along with sunnydale (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's exactly what it felt like yeah (laughs) and what about the fact that he said that he wants a black slayer yes yeah and, and and apparently it's divided the internet there's there's a lot of people on there who are not happy about the fact that it's going to be a black slayer, and I, I just I, I can't understand w- why. And I was reading this really good article, and I'll leave the link in the description below. But and it was asking whether they would have this same reaction to the Buffy reboot if it was going to be a, a white actress, um, you know. And it sort of maybe highlights the fact that there is still a little bit of of, of racism that exists in Hollywood and um, in the greater community, I guess. Yeah. And, yeah, everything's kind of been heightened a bit with the Black Lives Matter movement. Mm. I'm not going to say that he has directly chosen a Black Slayer, chosen to have a Black Slayer because of the Black Lives Matter movement, but I do think that it's important to have empowered black women on TV. Absolutely, absolutely. It is a good time for it, with not only with the Black Lives Matter movement, mm. with the Me Too movement, you should have more strong women on TV. Yeah. These are role models for young girls to grow up with. And exactly. not just young girls, young black girls. I do think that it's important, and not just for the um, African-American community, but just for anyone of colour. Yeah, for, it, that's right. Grow up. And it's not done. It really is not done enough. No. Most superheroes are white people that's just how it is yeah that's right i think it's a great step in the right direction it was one of the first to introduce a lesbian relationship on tv yeah and not one tara did die but that was a very well established relationship they do use it the way i've seen you watch shows like walking dead and they are literally killing them Mm. off bringing them in just to kill them off just so that they can keep using the, you know, the gay role and to keep flashing it in front of people as if it's something for entertainment rather than yeah. establishing these really nice relationships that are relatable to other gay people. And I think that is just that's a waste. And, like, I do see some of the issues that people would have had with with the immediate cast. They were all white. They, they were, was, yes. That is, that is, like, true. They did have black people on the show. There yes. were characters that came in that were black, but um, it was very. I, I can see why. I, if I was him, I would definitely be going with a black slayer. It needs a mix up. It definitely does. It yeah. definitely does, and uh, I think yeah, that, that can only you know improve the show definitely. Um, and yeah, I mean that that's another aspect they haven't talked about whether the sh- the show's going to be called Buffy the Vampire Slayer. 
if the Slayer is not going to be Buffy or if they give her a, a, the same name or a different name. Yeah, and um, keeping the name, it's it's odd that they are going to keep the name as Buffy the Vampire mm. Slayer. And I've said to you before, I do really hope that Buffy Sarah Michelle Gellar is in the show as the Watcher. Yes. I do think it would be really interesting to have, even if they could get um, Giles. Sorry, what's his real name? Anthony Stewart Head. If Anthony was actually training her to be the Watcher while she yeah. is training the Slayer to be the Slayer, I do think that would be such an interesting way of doing it. Like, you could still have her in without being the main star, keep your name and all that. It would be really awesome. I, I agree. Um, we haven't heard anything from, from Sarah Michelle Gellar about the reboot, which I find interesting. You know, yeah. I, I would have thought if she wasn't going to be involved she she would comment on it to you know say something about it a lot yeah. of the other cast have have mentioned it um so we've heard from james masters who played spike he's really keen for the idea of a reboot he'd love to reprise his role as spike oh, or yeah. and or as any other character he said he said i'll do whatever joss wants me to do was his quote um so i, I like that love- them to um i didn't really watch the end of angel i don't know what became of his character in that if he actually came back to life was he brought back to life in angel he he was still alive when the show ended so there's definitely scope to have spike return although he said maybe we might have to um you know do some sort of <laughs> heavy makeup work or, or good oh, lighting no, or something. No way. He's gorgeous. I've seen the new pictures. Hey, look, they've all. I think they've all aged absolutely mm. marvelously. I really think they're gorgeous, and it would be a dream come true for me personally to see him return as Spike yes. and re- start to rekindle a relationship with Buffy. I do think that it was. It, it was kind of like they just got to a point where they were just starting mm. to really build something on some really good solid ground and he was killed. So I would like to see that progress. Yes, I agree. And they yeah. were gorgeous together. They really were. She really made him a better person and I would like to see that build on. I really would. But, no, unfortunately, Joss um, didn't leave any of them in happy relationships at the end of the the series. He no, dis- I think they were all single by the end, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's, you know, con- you know, I didn't agree with the way that he did a lot of that. I don't think it was necessary, the stuff about Xander and Anya, how they had, you know, how we had to leave her at the altar and all that. I, You know, I think we could have, it would have been nice for us to have had one happy wedding on the show it would have we were really looking forward to it and then i and found then, it very out of character too he adored her he really did adore her he was very like i understand he had these flash forwards of what was what could happen and with them being in a relationship but um it was it was very out of character for him to hurt was. her the way he did i didn't i didn't like it yeah as much as i love Every single episode of the show, yes, there were a couple of things like that in the last series that I thought was, you know, unfortunate the way that they they went down. And we watched Buffy do this repeatedly with relationships. She did it with Riley. She did it with everybody that she was with. She did start to push them away. But that I found in character because that was what she did. She did that a lot. She was very um, on guard. She was very weary of people and letting them trust her. And that was kind of brought up in the last season when Anya kind of confronted her and said mm. that she has got she thinks she's above the rest of them yes she even admits to that she is she said it wasn't even in a very like it wasn't in a horrible way or that she said it but um I found it really interesting that she said yeah well I'm the one she is literally the chosen one right. that has to do something to your head when you are told that and she'd been through enough and done enough with her life for the world and her friends to kind of start getting a bit of a... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I mean, yeah. that's that's one aspect of the last season that's going to have to be explained in the new one is that um, Willow did that spell that meant that all the potential slayers were now slayers. So yeah. whether that's still the case in the new series or whether we get some, um, you know, creative editing that goes on when shows get rebooted, like Will and Grace, for example. Um, but... Yeah, that's going to be interesting whether that spell's still in place or uh, whether we see a, a universe where, you know, it's only the one Slayer again. Or that whether... is a really interesting point because yeah. if you did, and that is that has been the way that it's been done, not just with Will and Grace, but with Roseanne, we won't go into that one, but with <laughs> Roseanne, it was the same thing. They didn't decide not to kill Dan and that was like, 
So if they did that, that would mean that Anya isn't dead. That would mean that Sunnyvale is still there. Like, all that whole thing. That would be so interesting. I've never even thought about that. Yeah, or whether they just change that one aspect of of that spell Willow did, or do they have to undo the entire last episode to get them over any other issues that come up from from doing that? Because that's a pivotal part of how Buffy ended, that the world was, was fine because there were all these thousands of slayers out in the world who were once potentials but now are fully-fledged slayers. Yeah. Um, and that was, a you know, sort of a, a, you know, for us I guess it was a nice f- finality to the show. It was, yeah. you know, it was sort of, I, I did like the last episode in that regard. It wasn't it wasn't left unanswered any questions. It was all sort of, you know, wrapped up nicely in a bow. Yeah, and it let her off the hook. Yeah. She, yeah her life you... had been taken over from when she mm. was a very young child and I do I love that it was kind of like she finally got this chance to go and live her life without yes. having literally the weight of the world on her shoulders. And we see a little bit of that in Angel because uh, Buffy ended uh, a season before Angel finished. So from time to time we'd hear updates on Angel and what Buffy was doing and she was always in Europe travelling around with um with Dawn, so it was it was a nice that you know she got to have that finally. She got to to show Dawn the world, and and she wasn't the the only Slayer, so the whole weight of the world wasn't on her. So that's going to be really interesting. I'm very fascinated to find out where they take that in the new series. Yeah, but we're just going to have to wait and find out because um, it's not going to happen anytime soon. They're in very early development at the moment, um, so we're probably looking at at least another twelve months before we we see something on tv yeah but that's fine i'm happy to wait i want them to take their time i want them to get it right but i'm going to be fascinated and we're obviously going to be covering every new development that we hear about buffy reboot definitely we'll be following everything from you know the whoever they get to to fill these this new cast who the new slay is going to be um we're going to be all over it all over it all over it. <laughs> That's our show for today. Thank you for watching and a big thank you to Miss Kay. You can find the links to her YouTube channel, Graceful Mess, in the description below. And you can also find links to her Instagram page and Etsy store. If you enjoyed our show, please like and subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode. And we're done. I've with Fox and Joss Whedon, um, as well as Monica, I'm trying to pronounce her f-ing last name, <laughs> Newsom's going to get me, <laughs> Buffy the Vampire Slayer is being rebooted by Fox with Joss Whedon as executive producer and as well as Monica Os... <laughs> Damn, <laughs> See, these are the bloopers. <laughs> Are you still eating Oreos? Yeah, they've been left in here since the last time. <laughs> so they're a bit stale, too. Mmm. <laughs> this one's a little bit better because it was underneath the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Daryl. Would you like to be on YouTube, Daryl? Want to be in the outro? <laughs> <clears throat> Daryl, stop. We're doing screen. <laughs> <laughs> no, <Nah>, go away. <laughs> go away. <laughs> Oh, he just snapped at me. I saw him jump up there. I've, I've got video evidence of that. Get put down. Get put down. Green dream, Daryl. Green dream. <laughs>